done what I've said in the email this morning about uh, connecting to Jupyter Netbook, you should have a screen on your browser that looks like this. Uh, if you haven't, it's okay. As I said, it's not uh, completely necessary for today. Uh, but um, if you have it, it looks like this. Um, okay, so why did I make you, did, did I ask you to do all the, of this preparation? Obviously, Python, you can use it pretty straightforwardly. Uh, this is called Jupyter Notebook, and we find it's quite good when learning the language, and even after. And we're going to see a bit why uh, in the presentation. Um, but um, yeah, I think that's a good way to start when learning Python. Um, yeah. So once you're here, if you want to try a few things um, during the talk, you will need to create a notebook. And so you click on new up here. And you see you can create folders and text files and even open a terminal, but what you want is a notebook in Python 3. And you click and it opens a new window and you have your notebook there. And here it says Untitled, so you can change the name. Uh, for me, I will just call it test because you just click on it and it will ask you what you want to name it. Okay, um, the important comments for today, if you want to do something, you have two modes in the notebook. One is the um, uh, common mode, which you see the, here the cell is in blue, so that means I'm in common mode. If I stop typing, I will not type in the cell. Uh, it will just do shortcuts and weird stuff with my thing. To type in the cell, I either press enter or click in the cell, and it becomes green, and that's the editor mode. Okay, so you always want to see the prompt um, blinking in your cell before starting typing. Um, that's it. And there you can start typing, and it works. Okay, and the other thing is that. Um, once you tap something to execute it, you press shift, enter. And here we give you an error because obviously I haven't defined anything. Okay, so I, in summary, if you want to do something, you press enter to make sure you're green, and then shift enter to uh, execute your command. Okay, so for today, oops, I'm not going to start. Okay, so as I said, I'm assuming here you all know how to program in some language, so you don't need, you just need to know the basics in Python and not programming basics. Okay, so we'll start with strings because that's something most people have encountered before. And uh, then we can see a lot of um, different things. Can everyone see the screen okay there? On the screen? Yeah, okay. So to define a variable is pretty straightforward. Is variable equal whatever. Uh, the strings is within, with um, apostrophes is a double or single. Uh, with a notebook, you can easily see the um, value of a variable by simply typing the variable name and shift enter, and it will give you the value. You can put uh, several comments in one cell uh, that works the same. And finally, Python is case sensitive, so capital A is, not, is different of lower case A. Um, and this gives you about the format of the errors in Python, the error message is right at the bottom. And uh, what it gives you above is what you, is a stress, is a trace. Um, here it's not very interesting because it, there's no functions and stuff like that, but it tells you which line is causing the error. And finally, um, 
you can add strings together. So if you want to have the name Claire Carroge, you can just add Carroge to Claire and you get a variable that is a string that is Claire space Carroge. Um, so, so far so good. Okay. So as you probably know, hopefully, uh, Python is an object-oriented language. So what it means is that when you define a variable, you define more than a variable. Uh, a variable is an object, and each object often comes with things added to it, which are functions most of the time. Um, often they're called methods, but they're just functions. And these functions are specific to each object type. So a string will have different functions than a, another type that we'll see later. Um, so string and array won't have the, the same method. And what is, what is important is that although they are, are specific to each object type, they can have the same name. Because obviously, like if you do a function on a string and a function on an array, they can have the same name because there would be different functions. And they can also have attributes, and attributes are just um, values, you know, like, um, as I said here, think of it a bit as metadata for your variable. Um, okay, so in the notebook to find the top of an object, you can do this uh, integration mark A, and if I exit to the cell with shift enter, I get this thing at the bottom, which is very verbose, but it's nice to be verbose sometimes. And it kind of tell me it's a string, and it's this string, it's clear, and it has a length six, and other things, because str is also a function. But um, So the question mark is the inline help? The question mark is the inline help, yes. What you can do also um, for inline help, let's say you have a string, A, eh? and you know there was a method to do something and to which a method you add, you, you put a dot, A dot, and the name of the method, and you're like, oh, what was the name? You can press tab, and it gives you a list of all the methods possible for strings. And so if I press lower, it will type it for me. Enter it for me and nicely. And now I'm thinking I've put the parentheses because that's how you call a function in Python, you put parentheses. And you're like, okay, what are the arguments of lower? I press tab again in the parentheses. Oh, it's not, sorry. Shift tab this time, sorry. And it gives me some help. It tells me what it does. Return a copy of the string converted to lowercase. And it tells me, in fact, there's no argument to this one. And I can uh, press this thing, and it happens here. Uh, if I choose one that has uh, some arguments, uh, shift tab. You see here, it gives me what the arguments are. And if I press here, I have more details on what the arguments should be and how to put them in. So that's also why it's good uh, a notebook when starting to learn Python, because you get a lot of help like that very quickly without looking around. OK. Uh, other way to get just the type of a variable is uh, the function type, yeah, self-explanatory. And another way to get all the attributes and methods of an object is the yeah. um, The parentheses is A. Should I put it bigger? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that would be better. Um, and as you see, with a string, you get a lot of things defined. <laughs> the other thing with D, it doesn't tell you at all whether these things are functions or attributes or what they do or anything like that. So, uh, but at least it can give you a list and you can say, oh, here, L strip. Hmm, I wonder if that would do this. And you can check. Um, at least give you an idea where to look for. Okay, so that's it for the, the 
idea of object-oriented uh, language and how to get an idea of what each type, um, what are the methods of each type, and how to find the type of your object. Now, a very useful function, which is a print function. Um, you probably are familiar with such a function. It's just to give you the value of a variable. Uh, it can have any number of arguments uh, separated by comma. So I gave you a few examples here of how you can use it. Um, it the arguments don't have to be strings. It will convert to string as possible. Uh, if it can't convert to string, it will tell you in an error message. But, yeah. uh, what is more interesting sometimes is to how to format your output um, from the print. There are several ways to do that in Fortran, unfortunately. So we start with the new way, which is called f-string. And it's called f-string because it's an f followed by a string. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so you start with an f, and then you open a string, and then you put what you want. And you see there are like curly braces there. So you put your curly braces and the name of the variable you want in this place in your string. So, you know, here I want my variable b, and here I want my variable a. And that's how it, that's the simplest way of doing it. Okay. Obviously here it doesn't give you much, there's not much formatting yet um, because A is still a float. It appears like that, which seems a bit silly in a sentence. Um, there are lots of ways to format. It's even called a mini language. Um, so there's a link here for uh, the full specs. Um, but there are a few examples below. So for the formatting, you put your variable, column, and the formatting. Okay, it's variable, column, formatting. And here it says that the F means I want a fixed uh, point number. I want it to be length three in total and uh, zero precision, so no point after the comma. So it will write it as 100 instead of 100.0. Um, below, I've put a few that might be of interest. Uh, for example, uh, if you write a number of files, you might want to put them with the numbers that's uh, increasing and padding uh, your number on the left with zeros. That's how you do it. Uh, obviously, you have to be careful of the top of your variable. Uh, here my A is a float, so if I just say I want six digit right justified with padding on the left, it will still put 100.0 and there's only one zero on the front. Uh, if you want it as an integer, you would have, oh, uh, without the comma, you would have to specify the format again that it's precision zero and it's a fixed um, point. Um, and obviously you can also have the exponent notation um, that's like this. Um, you can also give the precision only without the total uh, width. Uh, if that means nothing dot three, um, for example. Okay. So this is the F string. You see there's an F each time in front. There. Uh, the other method that, up, that uh, exists is that the string object have a format method. So the way it works is you have a string, you do dot, the name of the function which is format, and in the arguments of the format function, you give the variables you want to put in the string before. And you see that it looks pretty much a bit like the F strings with the curly braces to say where you want to put your variable values, except instead of having the variable name here, you have it here. Um, the way it works is you can, uh, because you give the 
your variables as arguments of format. You can use the position of your argument. So here A is my first argument, so it's position zero. And B is my second argument, so it's position one. So here it says it has to take A value, the value of A and the value of B here. And you can also use what is called keyword arguments. So you give it a name and then you can use this name to refer to in the string there. So if you have a lot of them, it's, or if you want to use one several times, you can, it can appear several times in, this, in, the, in here very easily. And obviously it's the same uh, formatting uh, with a colon and the format. Um, and if you don't have if you just have an argument without a name, there's nothing colon and format. Um, yeah, don't, for, don't forget the colon. Okay, and there's more about comparing um, f string and string dot format here if you're interested. Um, yeah. And finally, there's an old way of doing things that you shouldn't use, but because you might read some legacy Python or anything, I bet it's there so you know it exists. So the old way was to use a percentage sign like this, um, which I think looks a bit like a C formatting, I believe. Um, but um, yeah, it's just to let you know, don't use the percentage thing. Use the, either the F string with the curly braces or the format with curly braces. Okay, so this is it for uh, printing, indexing. Um, for indexing, you use uh, square brackets and indexes in Python start at zero. So A1 is L. You can have negative indexes. Uh, that means it starts counting from the end of the string and minus one is the last element of your string in this case. So minus three, counting from the ends is one, two, three is the i. Um, Python has a built-in function to have the length of a lot of uh, objects. Um, it's called alien for length. Uh, so on a string, it will give you the number of characters. Um, be careful that with uh, more complex objects, it might give you not what you expect. So um, yeah. you make be careful when using it uh, at the start. And so now let's look at slicing. I've put all the examples here together. Um, what is important to note is this. Um, so in Python, just in the slicing, it works at the end of the slice minus the start of the slice gives you the number of elements that are output. So three minus zero, it will output three uh, because you start at zero, that means it outputs element zero, one and two. Okay, so uh, never uh, the last one. Other things, the start and end uh, indexes can be omitted. And if you omit the start, that means you want everything from the start up to. And if you omit the end, you want everything from whatever start you specified to the end. And as obviously for slices, you can use a stride. Uh, here it means from the end to the, from, sorry, from the beginning to the end, uh, every other one, and I give you this. Um, C-A-R from Claire. Uh, yeah. uh, and so to, rem to remind you, because the last index isn't included, if you do this, it doesn't give you the whole string because the minus one index is not included. So if you want the whole string, you just don't use a slice or you, you use a length of A for having the last um, element included. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the easiest way is just not to specify an ending and then you go to the end. But uh, yeah. if you want to use an expression, it can be useful to know um, to use the length of A. Okay. 
Okay. Um, and here I've put a few details that having the fact that uh, the last element is not, the last, last index is not included means you don't have to deal so much of it with minus one or plus one or when calculating your indices, it's a lot uh, more straightforward. And uh, once you get used to it, it's great. <laughs> okay, for, so the loops has obviously pattern as some loops. An important note, uh, loops are very inefficient in pattern. If it's really language that's really trying to avoid loops as much as possible and work on whole objects and things like that. So um, at the start, it always seems easier to do loops, but if you can avoid it, it's good. Um, and interestingly, for the loop, you can loop on any iterable object, so you don't necessarily need to loop on a range of numbers. It can be anything that, you know, as long as you can index it, it can work, usually. And the syntax is for uh, the variable for the loop, inside, to the, inside the loop, um, in, so it's not an equal, it's an in, uh, whatever iterable you want to loop through, and a uh, column. So the column is important. And um, one more thing is Python defines blocks of code with indentation only. So here you see the print is indented. It is extremely important. If I do not indent it, it's outside the for loop. Okay. Only the code that is indented will be in the for loop, and that's why there is no end of the for loop. The end is only when the indentation changes. And the good thing with the notebook is that if now I press enter, it will give me the indentation right away because it says I'm in a for loop and I can get rid of the indentation to, if I want to exit the for loop. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so to go back to the indentation, uh, these two lines are indented, so they are in the loop. This one is not indented, they are, uh, it is outside the loop and it only appears at the end after the loop. Okay. And one more thing, not only the indentation is important, but it has to be the same indentation the whole way through. If I put this, it is an error and Python doesn't know why I have suddenly um, it's more indented. Okay, so obviously you can loop over a range, uh, a number range. For this, you have a function that is called range. It has a maximum of three arguments. It's start, end, obviously the end is not included, and a stride. And uh, because it's a uh, Function arguments are separated by commas. Okay, and here you see what 3 to 15, every other one, and didn't write 17. Uh, you can obviously define much more easily a range of five numbers starting from zero, which is range five, it will give you zero to four. Um, so if you have only one argument, that's only the end, uh, you know, or like the number of uh, numbers you want starting from zero. And finally, you can do nested loops as usual. That means you have one loop, you indent for the inside this loop, and then you indent, indent again for the inside loop, and then you go out of the loop. And you have break and continue statements for, um, I hope you know how what these are. Um, that's to break the loop. Um, here we break at six instead of going all the way to 10, so i equals six at the end of the loop. When we get the loop. Uh, there's also a while construct. It's about the same as the for construct for the syntax. Uh, if you need it, uh, you can find it online. Uh, that's what... Okay, so the if constructs, Obviously, the if it looks a lot like the for construct with if, colon, indentation, 
no end of the if because that's the indentation that defines the blocks. Uh, you can, um, okay, what you can do conditions on, you can check if something is inside something. Um, you can check if something is equal to something with double equal or uh, inferior or equal is just a mathematical size, you know, I know know with stuff like uh, like Fortran. Um, for the negation, if you look at mathematics, is the exclamation point. If you're looking at the in uh, type of um, condition, you can write it as not in, or you also have the not uh, attribute for negating a whole as it's not in um, a whole condition. And finally, and and or are also just plain language and or um, uh, I've put the links for uh, more details on comparison expressions because you can do other stuff as well and uh, operator precedence. Um, if ever you have a problem, also if you have a problem with operator precedence, the, usually the main a uh, way of dealing with that is add parentheses around your conditions and then you know why in which way it will be done. And I've added two functions that are of often forgotten, uh, which are the any and all functions. And uh, why I've put them? Because often they can really simplify your conditions uh, in uh, if statements. Um, any will return true if at least one value in its, uh, in its condition is true. And all will return true if all values are true or uh, the object is null. Um, so what is a null object? Here I gave you an example. If you define a string without anything in it, just comma, comma, uh, um, that's a null string. And you see all will say it's true but any we say it's false because there's no element in it that is true. Uh, so that's a tricky bit with all, but yeah, it can be um, very useful to know the all and any function of them. Okay, any questions so far? I guess not. Perfect. So check the time. Okay, so let's continue with uh, more uh, built-in types, which are useful to know and uh, might be a bit different from um, other languages. Okay, the first one is list. So the first thing I want to say is lists look like arrays, but are not arrays. Okay, um, when you talk about arrays, you talk about an object that can be several dimensions and that all the elements of the array have the same type, right? A list is always one dimension and the elements can be of completely different, completely different type in one list. So a list is just a collection of objects and they can be rated or not. It doesn't tell you, it's just a collection of objects. Okay, so how you define a list? Uh, it's a square bracket like this. So um, like that, here you have a few examples. As you see, you can make strings with numbers. You can have a list as an element of a list. And in this case, you still have only two elements on your list. And that's why I say it's only 1D. And um, list of have a nice method that is often used as that is happens that allows you to add an element at the end of your list so that you see at the end here your list is a b three and five uh, we've added five just like that to the list um so obviously lists are indexable uh, i'm just telling you in python uh, documentation it says subscriptable uh, okay you can iterate on them so they can be built to, uh, they can be used for loops. So here you see, I say I'm looping on my list and it gives me all the elements of my list. That means that the 
variable of the for loop is an object that can change type within the for loop because the first time it is a list, after it is a number and a number. Okay, so be careful when you are listing, when you're doing a loop like this on a list that if you rely on your um, list element to be a certain object type, um, it needs to be because uh, the four will not crash because uh, like the four itself will not crash because of it. And finally, the list elements can be changed uh, with a. Um, that means that uh, if um, you see my list, my first element of my list for the moment is a is this list a b. I can say my, I want my first element to be the string new and it works. It doesn't give me an error or anything. Uh, so now my list, I should have put it here. Um, so now my list is new to three. Um, you know, it's different object type, anything. You can change it as you want. Uh, so now the question is, now that I have a string here in my first element, how do I access the index of my string? Because we saw the string can, you know, if I want to know what the last character of my string, how do I know that? It's this way. So you take your list, you say, I want the first element of my list. And then from this element, I want the last element of this. And so it gives me W. You could, if you find it more easier at the start, you could add parentheses here uh, to make it obvious that it's uh, what the order of the things are. And obviously, if you try to do that with something that is not subscriptable or indexable, it returns an error. And here you say it tells you int object is not subscriptable. And when you look at the line, you say like, oh, but I've asked subscript of a list. Well, no, because you ask the first one here is a subscript of the list. But this one is a subscript of the element of the list, whatever this element is. So that's a number. OK, so you can convert uh, objects to list and they are kind of two ways of doing this that people, I think, tend to think they are the same where, in fact, they are not. <laughs> you have a list function, and this function, if you give it an object that is iterable, will take every index and put it as, a different, as an element of your list. So if I do list A in this case, it gives me a list of six elements with each character uh, as an element. I can also simply put my a variable into square bracket. And in this case, my a variable stays as one variable and becomes one element in the list. And it's only a one element list. OK. OK, so um, Python has another um, type that looks a lot like list, that is called tuples. I would say the main or maybe almost only difference between tuples and list is that tuples are immutable. That means you can't change uh, uh, one element of a tuple. You have to change a whole tuple. So typically, you can think of it as something to save your constants or uh, you know, things you really don't want to, to change because then it will create an error if you uh, mistakenly try to change. So how it works, it's instead of square bracket, square bracket, it's parentheses. Uh, not that the parentheses are optional. You can just put a list of objects with commas and put it all in one variable and it will become a tuple. And if you want a tuple with one element, you absolutely need the comma. Because otherwise, I mean, if I put only one here, it will become a number and not a tuple. And that means that the um, one element tuple will appear like this in the output. You see you have the comma and the parentheses that tell you 
It is a top off. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said earlier, they're immutable. If I try to change the element zero only of the top all, it gives me, uh, does not support item assignment. Uh, I cannot do that. I would have to change the whole top all if I wanted to. Uh, you can convert to tuple just like list and in like with the tuple function and just like the list, whether you do tuple A or uh, parentheses, A comma parentheses, you get uh, two different outputs. In one case, you get a three element um, tuple and in the other case, you get one element tuple with the element being a list of three elements. Okay, so the interesting bit. Um, how, so Python tries to limit the memory usage so that if you say A equal B, it will not copy uh, B into, into A. It means that A and B are both kind of pointers to the same location in memory, okay? And that means that if you have mutable objects, if you change one, the other one is likely to change two. Uh, so that's how it works. So if I define a list, a list of three elements, I said I want another list uh, that is a copy of the first list. And then I decide to change only one element of the second list, it appears that both lists have changed because they both point to the same memory. So, it, it, and it's what you change. When you change one element, you change what's in the, this memory place. Um, but what works is that if you reassign complete, the whole list completely, then only one of the list is changed. You see here, I reassign my first list and I have two different lists, okay? Um, so the way, the easiest way to make a copy of a mutable object is either is to use the um, these functions. Uh, Dix will see after, but it's another function uh, that works. Uh, obviously, you don't need it for tuples because they are not mutables, so you're not going to run into the problem with tuples. Um, I say here, it's a shallow copy of the object. I don't define what shallow copy is. It means that in some cases, this might not be enough to prevent changing elements between the two objects, uh, but that's very rare. Um, it's usually enough. Um, it's possible to make deep copies and we'll see um, later on if we, uh, if we have the time. Uh, what you need to know is the two terms, shallow copy and deep copies and uh, there's plenty on Google to show you this um, very easy to find once you have the terms and you need it. Okay, and um, I, may be, I may have not said so very clearly, but obviously strings are immutable objects. So it's the same, you can't change only one element of a string, you have to change the whole string, so that's fine. Okay, one additional tab is a dictionary. Uh, so a dictionary allows you to label your values and to put them all together. So here I took an example uh, that would be common in our case. Um, if you want to define a grid for values, you might want to give it a name and to define what's the first point and what's the last point of your grid and what's your resolution of your grid and how are you going to keep all this information together and remember which one corresponds to what, you can use a dictionary. So the dictionary is a variable equal uh, curly bracket, curly braces. And then you can give a label name, which is a string, always a string, colon, and whatever value it is. So the value is whatever object type you want. In this case, it's a string, can be a number, it can be a list, it can be a topo, it can be even more complicated than that. Um, yeah. 
and then comma, and then you define your next label and so on. And here, uh, as an aside, you see that in Python, you don't need to define a continuation line. It will uh, work this way. Uh, it understands this as being just one line. Yeah. And so you see that D now uh, appears like this when I want to print it. Um, so I have all my data there and it's all labeled. And that means that because I have a label, when I want to access the data, I use the same syntax as uh, index, so the square bracket, but inside I can put the label name, which is called also a key. And it gives me what value I have for this. Uh, so in this case, the name of my grid is called my grid. Okay. So yeah, I should say, um, this in Python language is called key and this is called value. Um, yeah, that's an example. You can have complicated objects, so you can have dictionary of dictionaries. Um, you see in the first case I've put the first point and last point as two different entries with the longitude and latitude. I could just define first point and have, and have a dictionary's longitude latitude for each point. And then um, I could have D defined like this, so that point zero is a dictionary of my first point, point one is a dictionary of my second point, which I've defined a bit differently. I have made a copy of point zero and then I said uh, I want to change the value for this key to 180 and the value for this key to 90, uh, just to show you how you can do it. And then when I define my dictionary, I just put point 0 and point 0.1 and there are dictionaries and it's not a problem. It just appears at the dictionary here and this works. Okay, the interesting bit about dictionaries, how do you get the keys and values? Because sometimes you don't know all the keys or all the values or you want to look on things. Uh, so obviously dictionaries have methods already defined for you to do that. There's one that calls keys that will give you all the keys, one that calls that is called values that will give you all the values. And you can see because they written iterables you can do a loop on them. And you have one called items that give you the pair of key and values. And as you see here in a for loop, you can have several loop variables because items give you a pair. You can say, oh, I want the first element of my pair to be in the k variable and the second to be in the v variable. Or you can do it with only one variable. And if you do it, so if you do it with two variables, that's the output you get. You see, you have, have printed k and v, k and v, k and v. If you have one variable, it gives you the variable as a tuple. That's the key, that's the value, key, value, key, value. Okay. And finally, once you have defined a dictionary, you can always add a key and a value. Uh, and that's simply by defining a new key and uh, like it's the same way as if you were accessing a, a already defined key it just um, put a new name and a new value um, i've put a little thing here i find that so here it was a relatively uh, simple case where we have one grid and how do we define it um, if you have several grids to take um, to track, I told you the values can be very complicated. So you could say I have one dictionary with all the names as a list and all my first points as a list of first points and so on. Or you could have a list of dictionaries. So I have a unitary dictionary like that and for each grid and then put them all together in a list um, or in a dictionary if you want. I would say the second way where you have uni uni unity dictionary uh, that you put in the list is a lot more flexible. Uh, and 
usually putting doing list of dictionaries is a lot more flexible than the other way around. Okay, I don't know if we will have the time to go through all this, but um, as I said here, uh, don't forget the inline app and Google and Stack Overflow. We've, I've just put a few things here for you to go through and help um, um, absorb all of this information. The first one is actually not so much of a deep exercises. Um, it's mainly we saw the we saw the string formatting and we saw the dictionaries and how all this can work together and um, because you can use dictionaries to define um, to easily define uh, what you want in a string for example so if i have again my string with as uh, my grid and I want to output what my grid is, what the name is, and it has, sorry, um, what, the, uh, what, what the resolution and what the starts and endpoints. If I use a F string, it looks like this, you know, each time at each curly braces, I have to do the name of my dictionary and the key. There's something that exists in Python which is the this operator, the oh, sorry, star star operator that makes it a lot easier to use the dot format uh, string with a dictionary. Because then you just say my grid curly braces. This is one of the key of your dictionary, whichever one you want there, and the other key and so on. And what's it? What this operator does with the dictionary, it will transform this into a list of uh, keyword arguments. So it will, instead of having it like that, it will say name equal my grid, first point equal point zero, last point equal point one, rest equal uh, zero point five. And so format will have keyword arguments uh, directly like that in um, so it can be useful, and I put it there because sometimes if you look at Stack Overflow for a problem, you will see it, and it's not always completely defined what it does. Uh, so um, yeah, it just it is to tell you there is also a one thing operator that's the same. Uh, it happens before the variable. I haven't detailed. Uh, what they are, but I've put you a link that is pretty good. Um, it's quite thorough, so it goes through things that we haven't seen there. But um, yeah, if you want to know more, it can be quite useful to know those. Um, but. Okay, first exercise, um, split and join strings. Um, often that's something we want to do. Uh, I've taken a CMIP5 uh, file name. Uh, what if you want to, and you see this file name is quite uh, informative. It has the name of the variable, the frequency, as the name of the model, the experiment name, the, um, I forgot what it's called, it doesn't matter, the end, start date and end date, and the format of uh, the whole file. What if we would want to split this string and get each field uh, in its own, whatever we want, on its own. Um, how would we do that? So um, I can give you a bit of time, except we don't have a lot of time. Uh, yeah. And I've said here, check the strings method. Um, if you want, we, um, I don't know if you want to do it on yourself or want me to do it, but. So if you if you look here, as you, if you remember, if I want to have the string method, I put a dot and a tab, and you can go down. We'll go down quickly because we don't have a lot of time. And if you look at, and you find oh, split. Uh, it sounds like promising. 
<laughs> and again, so you put the parentheses, you press enter on the parentheses and uh, shift tab. Oh, sorry. And we'll uh, put it bigger to have more information. And it tells you return a list of the words in the string using set as a delimiter string. Well, it seems to be what we want to do um, because we were told to use the underscore as a separator. Um, so you can do set equal underscore and we put it in another variable just to, in case we want to do something with it. And I execute with shift enter. And you see, suddenly I have all the little bits together. Obviously, this bit is not quite what we want necessarily, but um, yeah. And you see that the underscore has disappeared. It's a separator, so it assumes that you don't want to keep the separator. Uh, obviously, that's useful also if you have a CSV file or something like that. Uh, anything tabulated like that can be uh, done this way. Okay. And if you want, we can do the next one, which is a little bit more complicated. I gave you the list of um, all the different bits of another file. I don't, I'm not even sure it exists this file, but it is, okay? And I want uh, the exercise is to go from there to this format. Um, and as you see, I've separated the NC and the two dates, so there are several separators to use. And um, it's obviously another function, and because I'm not very um, cunning, I told you I want to join, so the function name is called Join. <laughs> okay. Um, so, how are we going to do this? Because here we have a list. Join. Do I have, uh, can I do a join on the list? Uh, doesn't seem to be a join on a list. Okay. So join works on a string. Okay. So how am I going to have some help? On a, on a string function that I don't have a string. You put, let's say, I join. Sorry. Okay. Okay, so it looks a bit more complicated. What's important here is the example. It tells you how to do it. So you give the iterable, which is our list here, as an argument of your join function. And in front here, what is it? Can you tell me what it is? Separator. Yeah, you give the separator as a string here, and you put and you apply the function on the separator string. Okay, can you look a bit uh, weird at the start. <laughs> so if we want to do we what we would want to do, for example, is um, we want to join with a dot, um, which is what? We, what do we want to join with a dot? We don't want to join with a dot all the list. We just want to last join two. with the last two. How do we define the last two? Minus two and minus one. Yeah. Uh, does it work like this? Does it work like this, anyone? From beginning to minus two. Sorry? It should be from beginning to minus two. No. So the problem here, if I write it like that, minus one is not included. So it won't give me the last element. So end. End. Okay? So it's minus two to end. Okay, I can show you. It will give me an error because there's only one element. Oh, sorry. It will give me that didn't do anything, just gave me the minus two element. Didn't do anything because it had only one element. So if I do like that, it will run the two, last two ones. Okay? Best is to put this in a variable because we'll need it later. 
Then, okay, so we have these two joined together. What do we want to do now? Maybe we want to join this to this. Okay, so again, the separator. What has to be the separator in this case? If you remember the format. Underscore. It's a dash. In this case, it's a dash. Join. And what do we want to join together? Minus two to it. Minus one? Minus two? Is it minus two? Minus one, minus two, minus okay. three. Minus three. Okay, what do we want to join it to? A minus two. So therefore, minus one C. No, we want to join it to the C. Yeah. To C. Ah, yes. Yes. Okay, yes. to the one we have yes. already joined. So how are we going to do that? Because L and C are two separate variables. And if you see here, you need an iterator. We're just one, one thing. Hmm. You, you're typically going to do it like this. We're going to say, oh, I want a new list. That is my minus two element and this and three element of L and C. Okay. Okay. And we're going to get rid of this. And so yeah, I'm going to minimize this. Oh no, that's maximizing. <laughs> okay, get rid of it. So as you see now, we have the dot here. The dash here. Okay, what else do we need? After all the other fields are linked with underscores. So we should be able to do it all at once. So we should be able to do underscore join. Okay, what do we want to join? Let's probably Just add something. Mm -hmm. Sorry? On the column? Sorry? Just the column. Oh, just the column? Do we want to join everything together? Oh, well, we want the first. If, for the, for the owner, those, you are muted, right. so if you want to participate, you can unmute yourself, it's fine. So what we want to join, what we want all the elements of L is this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. It's mm -hmm. one, two, minus three. Uh, it starts at zero. 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 So it's from the start. Nothing to minus three. Two, one, two, three, four. So it's to minus three. Because, you know, it's. Yeah. And then we've got to join it to D. And then we have to join it to D. And we do this as before with a new list. Let's see. Oh. Mm -hmm. Sequence attempt. He expected the string and he found the list. Um, yeah, uh, we'll do something different. Um, Okay, so as this, I've, I've taken the slice of my list in a new variable. It's a slice of what's left, okay? And I append D to it, so that if I print F, you see, oops. No, we haven't got the separators in there. I, I forgot to. You see, I have a new list that's all my first elements, and at the end, it's only um, it's these that are already linked together, joined together. Okay. And so now I can do join with the underscore separator. I can just put F because that's my iterator. And give me some money. Okay, it's 2 p.m. It is. Oh, sorry, okay. but <laughs> so it, it was 
it's going to work. You just had to type it instead of Instagram, right? right yeah, yeah, probably. But um, it's it's good also to see it this way with uh, append, and um, I can work this way. Just uh, okay. So at the end for today, there's another exercise at the end that comes from a question we received recently on the help desk. Um, say, um, I've, we know there is the answer on it for it on Stack Overflow, so uh, feel free to check it out. Um, yeah, uh, is to introduce a function that is very hard to introduce by words and much easier to introduce by example. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I'm glad we went through it all today. Um, next week, normally we should introduce arrays because if you we haven't seen arrays yet, uh, and probably not see their files because we're using them a lot. But that's also why I wanted to discuss with other people see what they want. Okay, if you, there is something you know you will need and you would like to see, just uh, let us know because we can always adapt a bit uh, next week training. Uh, Claire? Yeah? Claire? There's a question here um, about next week. Amos is next week. Will we make a break for next week? Uh, because not many people I, will be. We can make a break for next week if it's Amos. Sorry, I, just, I didn't check what the uh, conference was. So, uh, yeah, so we'll I'll send an email. There will be a break next week no training and we continue in two weeks time uh training sorry i just say um something that tripped me up uh if you when you're trying to append something to an array you can append individual items if you're trying to append an array to an array you will, it will make it a single object inside the array if you want to make mm -hmm. you know if you've got two arrays and you, this is a, there's a function called extend if you want to join an array onto a sorry, uh, list onto another list um do you follow just to be one follow? dimension do you want an example? I can give you a quick example. So if you have mm -hmm. a list that's one, two, three, one, two, and you have another list that is uh, A, B, if you do L dot append A, you, sorry, you get A, B as a one element of your new list. Uh, if you do L dot Uh, sorry. Change the append to an extend. Yeah, I'm just keeping it for. If I just do l dot extend a, I get it mm -hmm. takes every element right, of right. Uh, the that, a. That's what most people want in that situation. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't work that way. Yeah. Anyway. Cool. So yeah, there are a lot of method to explore and mm -hmm. um, look. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah. See you in two weeks. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.